It's a great honor and a privilege to introduce Francesca Goodenough, a dear patient for many years. We here on the outskirts of Jerusalem in Ora. And Francesca, you have a fascinating story about your family and, and the Holocaust and the Shoah. Um, thank you, Les, for um, asking me to tell the story. It's uh, very special because I've lived in Israel 27 years as a Gentile um, Christian. Um, feel very much privileged to live uh, in Israel. and. I even didn't know that um, there is a connection in my family history to uh, the Jewish people uh, in such a special way as having a, a relative actually perishing in the Shoah. Um, so I uh, was born in Prague. Um, to uh, my name, my name is in Czech, Františka Šourková. And I grew up with a, um, in a household where my parents uh, took care of an old aunt of my father. And the story is connected to her husband who um, died in 1942 in Auschwitz um, and um, where he was transported from Theresienstadt. So, uh, so he was one of the uh, Gentile uh, who um, also were um, who died in uh, uh, camp. Um, he was one of the victims. Um, he was a, a head of an organization that was uh, uh, by the Nazis uh, considered a. a very nationalistic, and because of uh, Czechoslovakia was occupied by uh, Nazi Germany, um, anyone who participated in uh, a, anything um, uh, connected to the national um, um, uh, how would I say uh, uh, of a um, being pro Czechoslovakian was already uh, uh, suspicious and um, considered as a, a danger to um, the Nazi occupation. Um, so, as um, you, you may know, that the Nazi uh, Nazis they closed all the universities and. Um, all the intellectuals and leaders of the country, they were uh, persecuted, put in prison, or uh, dealt with as uh, to lessen the resistance uh, against uh, the Germans. So um, Bedrich was uh, one of these important people, and he was uh, uh, arrested in 1941, and um, taken to Terezinstadt, which was in uh, former Czechoslovakia. It was uh, one of the camps that uh, was actually um, kind of a mock-up uh, camp uh, created by the Nazis to present uh, to the world, to the um, International Red Cross. Um, a, a kind of a false impression uh, to give uh, how the Nazis were treating uh, the Jewish people, um, uh, gathering them from uh, the European countries. Uh, uh, the the, the mock-up was uh, presented that they were allowed to um, have cultural events and um, even buy things within the camp, but um, that was just for a show, really. Um, me and my family actually visited the camp, Terezinstadt. It was a, a very strong experience. Um, I think um, no 
document that you read or watch can make a same effect on you when you actually go and personally visit a place like that. Uh, it very much comes to you, you confront it with reality of the horrors that were committed in these places. Uh, if you're standing in a, in a um, uh, prison cell, uh, you're standing there with a group of people who are touring the camp, and you're 15 people in the group, and you just about fit in a cell, and you, you hear from the guide that there were uh, 80, 100 people in that cell, it all comes very much, uh, you confront it with uh, with the facts and it's um, it's a very um, I think it's a very important um, and strong experience for people to um, to include in their education but it must have been very emotional for you knowing that you had your a family member who, who was there who was one of the, uh, the inmates yes it was it was definitely a um, certainly something that um, uh, made me very much relate to the story uh, in a more personal way. Um, so we, I never knew the history in detail until actually uh, my uh, second son um, in sixth grade here in Israel uh, was uh, working on a some kind of a family um, roots project at school. Um, so we found an envelope in the attic that in the envelope they were gathered some documents from um, the uh, surrounding the circumstances of uh, the death of uh, Bedrich. And it was very interesting to, f to find postcards uh, that he was allowed to write from Terezinstadt to um, my father's aunt. Um, here is the, if you can see a little bit, here is the postcard from uh, the little bit of German I know. Um, I understood that they were permitted uh, only up to 30 words and it was uh, censored so I also know that in the text he says uh, he only speaks uh, how the life in the camp is actually quite okay and that uh, things are uh, going well and that he's being taken care of uh, which of course is shocking um, when we now know uh, what took place in the camps. Um, so he spent about a year in Terezinstadt and then he was transported to Auschwitz. And um, so we have some uh, letters from Auschwitz as well. Here is this one, the green one, with a stamp uh, with the portrait of uh, Hitler. With very clearly, you can s see the Auschwitz stamp here, and it's uh, got the postmark, the Auschwitz postmark. The stamp, yes, yeah. uh, addressed to um, uh, my father's aunt to Prague. Uh, it it was all written in German. Um, Bedrich and his wife Viera, they were intellectuals, they, they spoke German, they spoke Italian, they knew Latin, they, uh, um, um, it, it was, uh, I'm sure for him it was uh, um, not, um, um, <laughs> um, very, um, how would I say, a, a very pleasant a, a experience. He was a, a man who was used to um, being behind the desk and, um, and then he was um, 
confronted with such a, a cruel conditions in, in prison. So um, here's a telegram that um, was uh, sent to my father's aunt uh, informing her about her husband's death. Uh, he died in Auschwitz in 1942 uh, of typhus. Um, and you have the pictures as well. <coughs> yes, here is, this is pre-war, pre-war picture. Uh, him, um, a distinguished uh, um, professor behind his desk. And here we have, uh, again, a picture before the war. Here, uh, I believe, is uh, uh, his uh, likeness uh, uh, done by someone in Terezinstadt uh, because um, there were, there were uh, these um, art kind of art and cultural things uh, allowed in, in Terezinstadt. So, this uh, is uh, someone. Uh, drew a, uh, a portrait of him and here at the bottom uh, it is him as a prisoner when it must have been when he arrived in Auschwitz uh, including his number uh, given to him um, and it actually says underneath Auschwitz that's right yes um, yes um, there is a there is his uh, death certificate um, including a, an exact hour and two minutes of time of death and here we have a um, um, a list of items that were on him um, when they uh, when he arrived in the camp. Um, here, um, my German is not very good, so um, here it says one pair of shoes, uh, two pair of socks, um, one hat, um, two pair of underwear. Um, and a few other things that I can't make out really what they are. Uh, but I remember when I really opened the envelope and found all these documents that I was so shocked that um, this um, uh, killing machine of the Nazi um, 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 era there was uh, so well documented and um, meticulously yeah. um, administrated and it was not in, in done in secret but it was done everything properly on the paper and that was a it was a shocking um, moment for me to see actually the docu to hold the documents in my hands um, so it, it was for me a, a very important actually to uh, connect this story that took place in my family um, even to the meaning of me being here in in the land um, in Israel in, very special that actually someone from my family uh, partook in the fate of the Jewish people of Europe then um, and God's faithfulness of bringing uh, me here to witness the um, the life and the um, um, he, here in in the country, uh, all my children were born here, 
and um, I just want to connect something special to the whole story and that is that uh, being in Israel I uh, became a doula which is a, a, a professional who helps uh, women through pregnancy uh, labor and birth and postpartum and uh, I had a very strong experience the first time ever I attended a birth it was in Bikur Cholim in uh, Jerusalem and um, it was very special it was like as if um, I heard a voice you come from a country where only a few decades ago these same Jewish mothers were birthing babies into death and destruction and here look at this look at you now you come from that country and you have this privilege now to attend uh, these same Jewish young mothers who are bringing their children into uh, life and into a state into a country into a society or um, uh, resurrected and you know uh, with future and life so it was a very strong experience uh, and that's uh, that's how I feel <laughs> um, oh, that's very profound sure yeah. And just so you have a, a certificate that the um, the Dutch uh, the, the Czech government gave um, in honor of your your uncle. That's right. It's um, this comes from uh, 1948. Um, it was uh, awarded in memoriam a, a version of a um, basically a recognition of. Um, someone perishing you for the sake of uh, the f the fight for freedom um, against Nazi Germany um, as Bedrich Jankowski was uh, um, included in, in that uh, as someone uh, and and perceived as someone who fought for uh, um, freeing uh, Czechoslovakia from the Nazi occupation. Wow. <coughs> and Francesca, can I ask, did your parents or your aunt, did they ever speak about the Holocaust to you when you were growing up? Uh, it was my, um, my grandmother uh, who only um, died a year and a half ago at the age of 96 so she's the one who uh, would remember anything from the time since she was born in 1921 and she was a very young woman during the time of the Second World War and uh, her only um, recollection was really the uh, the loss of her all her Jewish uh, classmates, uh, the the terrible reality of uh, them missing from one day to next, disappearing completely, disappearing without a, without any anyone mentioning anything, any word really, and uh, she, my grandmother. Um, her memory of the Second World War, it affected her in a way that she could not study uh, at university. She only studied one year at university and then the Nazis closed uh, uh, the establishments and, the, and so that generation, uh, only a few people uh, tried to chase their education after the war maybe, but probably most didn't. Um, but um, uh, her husband, my grandfather, um, he was, um, um, he by, uh, um, by a good, um, by some, uh, because he spoke German, he was taken as a servant in a, 
uh, or work uh, in a farm within Czechoslovakia to uh, to work for the Nazis. They took uh, all those things um, to provide for their troops, um, but most people from um, my grand grandfather's age then they were taken to labor camps or uh, mostly to Germany to work for the Nazi war machine really but it was his mother who um, made some um, arrangements for him not to be shipped off to Germany but to some farm uh, where the Nazis already um, took over and um, because he could speak in German um, but um, so my parents were born only uh, at the very end of the war um, so they would not really uh, uh, remember much uh, but I I grow, grew up with uh, uh, definitely with the respect towards um, uh, the, the amount of food that we would have um, you know for example um, you would not um, buy another loaf of bread until the, the previous bread was all eaten up so um, there definitely were some uh, remains of those uh, war years, you know, that rubbed off even onto a younger generation. Um, but that, of course, now to the young people, that's something that is, uh, it's like stories from Mars, I think. It's foreign. <laughs> it's very foreign, yes. Francesca can ask, that um, envelope with these very important documents, when, how come they gave it to you? Or it was just, or did you just find it? Um, because that could have been thrown out and it could have been lost and it would have been lost forever. Um, I, I think, yes. Uh, so, this aunt, the wife of Bedri, who died in Auschwitz, she she died when I was 10 years old, so I didn't have a really opportunity to ask her much about that uh, era, which is a shame. But uh, my grandmother um, told me that she was... Uh, remember I mentioned that they, uh, uh, Viera and Bedrich, that they were the chief archivist. So in her professional... Uh, way she would document and archived everything so she kept uh, really um, in a safe place all these documents all the postcards that Bedrich would send from Theresienstadt or all the letters from uh, even the telegram uh, she would kept all of it in one place and uh, when it um, came to the fact, that when Daniel um, had to do this Avodat Shorashim, uh, the roots of the family, the roots of the family, then um, we just, my grandmother said, he, it's in the attic, you can go and look for the envelope. You were back in, in uh, uh, When in we the would go and visit uh, every summer holiday in Czech Republic. And it was there in the attic? It was in the attic. Um, and had it been touched? Not since I think uh, Vera passed away, not wow. which was in 1986, so it wasn't touched. <laughs> um, so that was a very. Um, it was like finding a treasure. A priceless um, treasure. Really. Yes. It, it's. Um, it's 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 priceless. It really is priceless. It, it, it was finding like a treasure because it, we also were equipped with uh, much understanding um, of um, you know uh, spending uh, I mentioned that I've lived here 27 years and every year um, here in Israel uh, when we um, 
in memory of, of uh, the Hashoa, the Holocaust, you, yeah, of the Holocaust memorial. When when we um, hear the stories of the survivors every year, there is a new, um, there is always a, a new depth to the horrors of the Holocaust and another angle, and it, it doesn't stop. And uh, when um, I think every person who remembers that time has uh, a story that is so important and is like a, wow. a, a part of a puzzle that is most, it's so vast, you know. Uh, wow, so thank you. I just want to I really, um, I have to just <laughs> really thank you. I'm, I'm a little thank bit nervous. We can, no, 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 just nervous, go, you know? we can just sit. Yes. I just want to thank you so much. Um, these documents that you have, um, these letters and postcards and telegrams and the original photographs, you know, it's not only have you related the story, but please God, it will be such a, a wonderful memory and may his memory be for eternal blessing and uh, I think you have he'll be very proud what you've done and how you've kept his name and his and what he did for prosperity and that your children know the story and that everybody will know the story and uh, I just cannot thank you enough <laughs> it's been the greatest honor and privilege really and I am so grateful um, to you and your dear family for what you do and we can just look up to you as uh, such wonderful examples that we can all really strive to emulate you. You really, you and your husband and your family are, are incredible. Uh, and uh, we are very grateful. And also, I just want to mention, Francesca, the Czech, well, Czechoslovakia was, in 1948, the only country that really supplied arms to help uh, the new, the well, Jewish people um, mm -hmm. established the State of Israel. So um, we've been very grateful to the Czech. They, they really stand out as uh, a righteous na a nation mm -hmm. and dear friends of, of the Jewish people as well. Yes, um, uh, well, thank you. Uh, but really, uh, as we say here in Israel, Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem. <laughs> All glory to Him, really. Uh, absolutely. But thank mm -hmm. you so much for. Mm -hmm for really for uh, for finding the material and uh, it's all we also say it was mm -hmm. all meant to be yeah <laughs> okay thank you